Greetings, I'm the political ferret, and this is a response video to Lindy Beige's immigration and our great non-debate from 2016. Link is in the description. Check the video out. I'm going to talk about immigration. First of all, I agree in most of what you were saying, Lloyd. Absolutely, especially the polarization of politics is absolutely a mess. But you ask a lot of questions, and I think you deserve answers. I don't know which country you're in. Uh, you may be in a country um, uh, which is not like Britain, uh, but I think a, a lot of you are in countries uh, where there are far more people trying uh, and having difficulty getting into the country than there are trying to leave the country and having difficulty in doing so. Okay, the first question. Well, I'm from Austria, so our situation is quite similar. We too have more people who want to come in than people who want to get out which is an indication that those of us who are now quite some time here did something right, isn't it? That's your left. So the Conservative Party is supposedly right-wing. Now, of course, right-wing doesn't actually mean anything. It's a completely arbitrary label uh, where you get a load of completely unrelated policies and package them all together uh, and, and associate them with one party. Uh, but all those policies are subject to change. In fact, at pretty much any given uh, policy, whatever you pick, at some point it has been advocated by the opposition party at some point in the past. Uh okay, the next point is that left and right doesn't mean anything. Well, I have to disagree. It still means something. Because right means still looking for the good in the past and left means looking for the good in the future. For the right wingers, everything they don't know yet is bad and dangerous. And for the left, anything they are used to just sucks. This definition done by the Frenchman in the time of the big head rolling <laughs> still applies. Well, at least in theory. The fact that it seems like it doesn't mean anything anymore is like... Hmm, imagine you have a favorite Chinese restaurant and an Italian guy takes it over and changes the menu to pizza. But says, oh, that's still Chinese. And everybody else around says, yeah, yeah, it's Chinese. You might be confused. Politics is sold under false labels these days. And you pointed this out. Just called it by the name. Okay, but then we are in the realm of emotions. Lloyd, you are a rational type. But rationalist thinkers make about 50% of people. You know, for thinkers, logic feels good. But for feelers, what feels good is logical. You don't have to fight for the thinkers. They get the facts and they make their choices accordingly. The whole fight, this whole political circus around feelings is for the other 50%. That's the reason we have all these trigger words and this whatever phobia and races and, and all this nonsense. That's just for the 50% of feelers. That's annoying. But that's the reason they do that. It's reasonable to imagine that between zero and infinity, there is an optimum number of immigrants that a country might uh, let in. What is that optimum? Well, do you know what? I'm not going to say. I'm not going to tell you, but I don't have to tell you. You see, I have the luxury of not being required to come up with an optimum number because I'm not trying to change anybody's behavior. Ah, finally, numbers. The optimum amount of immigrants. So you didn't want to tell us what you think is the best number. And okay, I tell you mine, I bite. But first, we have to think about growth. Do we want growth? So does your country grow? I mean, you're on an island and as far as I know, the sea level is rising, isn't it? So I would go with no. Well, and I'm pretty sure that Austria isn't growing. And our economy, well, they didn't grow that much, isn't it? So. Do we need growth in population? I would say no. Holding the numbers is absolutely fi fine. And you know what? I would say shrinking is fine too. If we shrink for one generation or two or maybe three, what happens? Nothing. If there is more space people could use and there are more jobs, didn't you think that the generation after us will give birth to more babies? I mean, I would. I mean, my generation didn't get as much children as we should because they hammered this there are too many people in the world narrative in our heads since kindergarten. There is a paper from MIT where they stated that a population reduction will increase the GDP per capita. 
And hey, it's not rocket surgery to understand why. Okay, then let's talk business. What is the optimal migration number? Well, it's the same number as people who are leaving. That's right, Lloyd, we don't even need a calculator. If in one year 10,000 people leaving, not to the graveyard, to another country, that's important. If 10,000 people are leaving the country, you can take 10,000 from another country. It's easy. For Austria, this means about 20,000 a year. 20,000 people a year leave Austria and about 15,000 of them come back. This leaves an additional 5,000 for people from all over the world to come in. For the United Kingdom, this would be around 300,000 who are leaving and about half of them are British, British in the first place. So that's the number if you don't want to grow, of course, and if you don't fear to shrink. If you want to grow because you want to play these funny little pyramid games, the numbers have to be obviously higher. But then you have to come up with an idea and a policy how to employ them, how to house them, and so on, and so on. And here's where I, I come to my, to my point, uh, dear viewer, um, because I'm not in a position to uh, actually dictate policy in this country. I'm not an MP, I'm not in government, uh, I'm not in opposition to the government. I don't have to come up with cogent arguments to counter the, uh, the, the policies of the government. Uh, and I'm not trying to influence you one way or the other into one of these two camps. In fact, I'd like you to, sp to spot the fact that maybe there are, there are other possible uh, opinions to have on this. Yeah, Lloyd, but you don't do that. I mean, you are right. You're not member of the parliament. You're not a politician. You're not part of the political system. Do you know how I know that? Because none of them has half a million subscribers. You are much more important than you think. You talk to people and they listen to you, okay? You pointed out in a very entertaining way that these people in politics talk crap just to appeal to those feeler types, to those guys who think that their feelings are somehow facts. But hey, who cares? I mean, do you think this type of people watch your channel? <laughs> I mean, you're talking to rationalists. We know all that. Perhaps just on a subconscious level, but we know that. Um, now, I've read articles in uh, papers where uh, a journalist has, has read, written something really quite reasonable, uh, well argued and backed up with facts and statistics uh, showing that immigrants do in fact uh, contribute to the British economy. And so yeah, <laughs> the free press in North Korea tells that all the North Koreans are the richest people in the world. I mean, don't get me wrong. Of course they are good for economy. The Westerns don't consume that much anymore. I mean, we would love to save the money to buy a house or something like that. But that's not what economy wants. They want us to buy mobile phones and stuff you can throw away. So you essentially take the money from those Westerners who then cannot afford a house, but who cares, and give it to people who have essentially nothing. Of course, the consumption increases then. I mean, again, it's not rocket surgery, but if they would bring benefits beyond that, because they are so clever and think outside the box and so on and so on, why doesn't every nation fight for them? I mean, if I would believe the press, um, and they, they, these guys would be so great, we would fight for them like we fight for oil right now. If this would be true, the countries they, uh, they come from in the first place would be economy powerhouses. Why aren't they? And I mean, you pointed out this, the exactly same thing just one minute later. And then you do as if these two things were equal. They, they are absolutely not. I mean, statistics is one thing, reason is another. I mean, would you say, oh yes, I read Einstein and after that I read the Bible and now I'm so confused. You shouldn't be. So, what I say to you, my dear respected and intelligent viewer, is if you are going to say something which requires other people to alter their behavior, if you say to other people you should think you should accept more or fewer immigrants or whatever it is, then 
you're going to actually have to come up with a number, an optimum number of immigrants that you believe uh, Britain should be, uh, should be letting in um, or, or have within its boundaries. And you've also got to come up with, and this is, I would say, considerably harder, a policy which would actually achieve that figure and then maintain it. So imagine there are at the moment uh, this, no, imagine this is the optimum number of immigrants, but we've only got uh, this number at the moment. Well, obviously what we can do, we've got to come up with a policy which increases the number until we get there. But then what's to stop? Mm, no, I don't think that's the hard part. The hard part is to decide if we want to end this pyramid game of growth or not. That's the hard part because it has some implications. If we say here in Mozart land, we take as many migrants as people who are leaving, that's quite easy to do. You need borders and you need some gates and you need a bureaucracy who gives out and recollects applications. And then we accept the amount of these and if you are accepted, you can enter and if not, well, not. And if you do it anyway, you have to leave to where, well, it's not our business. And you were talking about migration and yet not refugees all the time. It's quite interesting, but let's do this too, okay? I would suggest we take a contingent of places for refugees. Let's say for Austria, about 500,000. So we can take 500,000 refugees, but if this contingent is full, well, it's full. No soul more. If a crisis is over and these refugees go back, I mean, that's the reason they are refugees. They come over here to get out of harm's way and then they go back. And if they go back, we have another 40,000 places free. <laughs> I mean, imagine you're standing in a shop and you want to buy one of these tasty pieces of whatever you want to buy and the guy in front of you buys the last thing well bummer it's out it's not that the uh, that the guy who wants to sell the stuff won't sell you this stuff or because he didn't like you or he's evil or racist or, or whatever the stuff was just out nothing is infinite despite stupidity of humanity of course but space and room is finite Okay, you don't have to think how many people you could take in per year. You have to think about how many people you want to take in at all. And of course, some of these guys want to migrate and no problem. Absolutely okay. Get yourself a form, fill it out, wait till the application is approved or not and accept the result. And if you can't migrate, even if you speak the language and you're integrated very well and and so on and so on. But the quota is zero because nobody left last year. Sorry. I mean, yeah, I know it sounds heartless. I know that, but try to drive a car by your heart. Try to uh, drive a car, closing your eyes, following your heart. No, don't try it. I mean, it never works, but we have to stay with the facts. Okay. And that means hard choices. But we have to make politics with our brains and not with our hearts.